5. Let's talk about variations. So variation, as we already discussed, variations are uh, the, re the reason for variation is uh, because of the mutations and variations are the raw materials for natural selection to happen, right? So it's really important to, to know different kinds of variations. So the three major kinds of variations are genetic variations and environmental variations. And then uh, the, the third type is very interesting, genotype by environment interaction. So variation that result uh, resultant of genotype by the environment interaction. So these three are the major forms of variation. So what is basically the first one? The genetic variations are uh, the mutations happening in the stretch of DNA molecule or RNA molecule if it's an RNA virus. You know, so uh, there is a default uh, de facto, uh, you know, uh, uh, imagery that we we all have it when we talk about a mutant or a variant, isn't it? So the genetic. So uh, for example. Uh, nowadays we have uh, we are living through the COVID-19 so we have several mutants of the uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus so all these mutants for example Delta variant or Alpha variant Beta variant all these are genetic variants isn't it so let us uh, put up one simple example of skin color so we, we have different kinds of skin color and sometimes of course most of the skin color you can uh, you know you can actually um, uh, can be explained by your genotype. For example, you are a Caucasian, the European, uh, the West, uh, you know, the, the uh, high alt, uh, high latitude uh, people, you are, you, if you are living in the high altitude, uh, you know, latitude uh, places, then chances are high that your skin color is more whiter, more fairer. You know? Fair itself is uh, a misnomer or rather it's inappropriate. You know, so fair color is never white alone. It could be black also. Why not? It's a fair. You know, it's not inferior, isn't it? So the genetic determinant in the skin color is really important. And that is the reason for all these races in sociology, isn't it? So black race and white race are because of the gene, the genotype, isn't it? Now that uh, even if you are white, you know, you go to... Uh, tropical place like um, you go to Kerala for example or Goa and spend a, a summer there exposing your skin to the, the, the sunlight and then you will definitely will change your color of your skin there is something called tanning so the tanning is basically the mel melanin expression of melanin on the skin right will become more in response to more UV light so that is called environmental variation is, isn't it so though the genetically identical even if one uh, you know, in the case of homozygotic twin, if one twin goes to uh, Hawaii to spend a vacation, the other twin stays back in Sweden. So definitely after uh, two months or a month of vacation, the, the one that got, uh, went to Hawaii will be tanned, isn't it? So that is called environmental variation. Environmental variations are not heritable. Now the third one is genotype by environment interaction. What is that? Ability to tan is different. You know, so not all of us can tan. So even if you are a, a white skinned, you know, and you go to, you expose yourself to the sunlight, you sunbath, then uh, some people will turn their color, uh, you know, in response to a hot day out, it, the skin color changes into red. Some will become a kind of blistery. Some will become, you know, brownish, the, the normal tan, isn't it? So yeah, so all these things are, uh, the environmental changes but in one sense it is determined by the genotype you know so it is not like completely same same uh, you know whoever goes to Kerala for sun bathing uh, will not actually you cannot predict that everybody's skin color will turn into brown so maybe it becomes reddish so uh, environment plays a role so as a genotype so it's a combined so ability to tan is of course the com it's a combination isn't it so that is what this uh, particular thing is so uh, genotype by environment so by the way what is genotype so uh, you know so genotype is basically a combination of alleles uh, you know uh, an individual carries so that is called the genotype so whatever the the, the alleles so is it both are recessive both are dominant or dominant and recessive or co-dominant uh, alleles so whatever be so that is what the the, the structure of the geno uh, you know the, the genes or alleles is what you call it as a genotype you know and now by the way allele what is that allele allele is basically uh, different versions of genes 
you know and genotype when we talk about genotype there is a phenotype also that is nothing but traits that is being expressed uh, morphologically isn't it so the an individual whatever the traits that uh, individual expresses is called its phenotype versus genotype isn't it now uh, what is a reaction norm by the way so pattern of the phenotype uh, an individual may develop upon exposure to different environment so uh, you know the, the the phenotype can be differing right In, when you expose with different environments so that kind of pattern of phenotype is called reaction norm so reaction norm is very important when you discuss about environmental variations so the phenotype changes in response to the environment phenotypic plasticity which we already introduced in the last class so it is by the process in which the organism develops different phenotypes in different environments it's quite related to the reaction norm so uh, organism develops different phenotypes in different environment is known as phenotypic plasticity so plasticity is like ability to change some form like neuronal plasticity is very important for uh, memory and learning so the neuron the structure of synapses can change you know so that is called the, the plasticity so epigenetic inheritance is a very important form of the variation so environmental factors how does that work the, the third mode so by the way just going back uh, one two three mode so only the first and third mode serve as raw materials for the natural selection to happen the second one is of not much significance in natural selection uh, especially the, the adaptive mode of natural selection of the Charles Darwin you know so first and third are heritable and only those variations are considered now why the epigenetics plays important uh, the epigenetics is an important thing for the environmental factor how it can it can modulate the gene expression so environment like the tanning ability to tan so environmental factors can modulate the gene expression so it is non-genetic that is why it is epigenetic the above the, the genetics is all about or, or beyond genetics so there are three principal modes of this epigenetics the first mode is by differential methylation so that is basically methyl uh, functional group it attaches to the cytosin uh, uh, you know the, the the base of the dna or rna molecule so basically the dna molecule right nucleotide of the dna so when it atta attaches on the cytosin wherever c is there the methyl methyl group attaches so the uh, the consequence is that wherever this methyl is uh, attached so the expression is stopped so those uh, genes especially in the gene regulatory the promoter regions um, after methylation it doesn't actually lead to the expression so it turns the genes to off position so you need to demethylate for the genes to to get expressed so methylation is really interesting uh, at various levels of our lifestyle uh, you know life stages for example uh, if you look at the infants most of the genes are methylated you know that means it's all turned off so as you age you know so the methylation is also increasing so and a very old person if you look uh, the methylation is very low that means all genes are expressed you know so that is what the, the methylation that differs in our uh, you know the during the uh, the the newborn so the, this kind of epigenetic mechanisms are really important for turning on and off certain genes that are responsible for the function of uh, the cells for example tissues you know for example uh, you know the, the neurons and muscle or uh, dna sequence extra exactly same but these two turns out to have different functions right so all because of the epigenetics switching turning on and turning off that is the, the reason for it so apart from methylation the second major uh, uh, reason uh, you know mode of this epigenetic inheritance is through uh, histone modification so histone are nothing but protein molecule that is involved in the the winding of this the dna molecule into the histone to make the chromatin isn't it so or chromatid right and that together makes into a chromosome so chromosome is really condensed uh, structure of the chromatin molecule so chromatin is nothing but dna plus histone so if uh, the dna is tightly wound in the histone then it is not really accessible to regulatory uh, elements and then it, it doesn't actually transcribe or translate isn't it so the genes not don't get expressed so the differential um, uh, remodeling of the chromatin uh, the, that is called chromatin remodeling is a very important factor contributing in the expression of the genes so that is yet another uh, very important epigenetic uh, uh, method 
through which the gene expression is being controlled by uh, different tissues you know so it, chromatin remodeling is nothing but dynamic modification of the chromatin architecture like this so the architecture is dynamically modified uh, you know uh, to allow access of the condensed genomic dna to the regulatory transcription machinery proteins you know like transcription factor and all those uh, uh, things that are involved with the the transcription uh, because unless it is transcribed the translation doesn't happen right so thereby it controls the gene expression so the chromatin remodeling uh, you know by the histone is a very very important mode of epigenetic inheritance and third one is uh, you know mrna degradation by small interfering rna or micro rna so micro rnas are uh, circulating molecule the very small rna that can uh, you know complementary bind with the mrna so that once it bound it can degrade the mrna molecule so that expression doesn't happen the translation doesn't happen mrna means already transcribed transcription happened but after transcription so it get degraded because of this micro rna so that is why uh, that is how it can control the gene expression level because unless translation happen you can never say that it has been expressed so epigenetics is really important for environment you know so to environment uh, how the environment modulate the phenotype is usually through epigenetic modifications you know and some of these epigenetics can also be transmitted uh, through this generation at least for few generations you know for example methylation while genetic the classic genetic ways the dna sequence are being uh, changed because of the differential survival of certain variants over others natural selection of course and then the dna sequence directly uh, change the phenotype it need not control the gene, gene regulation you know this is optional it can directly change the phenotype because that is what they express the proteins being expressed are different right if the dna sequence is different so these two are the main method that the phenotype is being influenced so it's uh, uh, epigenetics or environment is not only about the uh, the uh, ecology or ecosystem where you are living or physical factor but also like what you eat you know for example the juice or whatever the things or even the medicine that you eat everything can you know influence the epigenetic modifications friends you know now how does this alleles originate have you ever thought of it alleles are nothing but different versions of the same gene so how this alleles are being originated so the main method is by dna replication so because replication is intentionally error prone so the dna polymerase enzyme is the enzyme that is responsible for the replication but this has low fidelity fidelity you know high fidelity of course you can buy it for uh, your uh, you know if you want your pcr uh, to be less error prone but usually naturally occurring dna polymerase are low fidel low fidelity that means it it makes lot of mistakes and these mistakes are intentional because unless mistakes other variants are not being formed in the population you know and most of these disastrous errors that is something called pre mutations gets repaired by uh, repair machinery you know so mismatch repair enzyme and proof reading enzymes come in play and then it repairs it so malfunction of these enzymes you know these enzymes like proofreading enzymes or mismatch repair enzymes are associated with cancer so if these enzymes are faulty then the cancer will result so usually these enzymes are uh, working in healthy individuals like you and me so in that case uh, the proofreading errors most of these errors are being repaired especially those errors in protein coding regions disastrous errors but some non disastrous non serious errors get escaped from the repair mechanism that is a result of alleles so that is how the alleles are being formed so mutations coming to mutation there are different kinds of mutation broadly two types point mutation or substitution that is substitution of one nucleotide with another and indels indels means insertion or deletions that result in a more drastic frame shift mutation the the reading frame open reading frame of these codons change so that means that translation uh, is uh, resulting in entirely different proteins you know it's very uh, uh, serious kind of uh, you know mutation in dance so coming to the point mutation we have already discussed different kinds of point mutation early on like transition that is purines with purine or pyrimidine with pyrimidine versus transversion purines with pyrimidine and vice versa synonymous versus non synonymous synonymous means silent mutation 
amino acid is not changing. While non-synonymous means replacement, different amino acid, no? Amino acid changing, non-synonymous mutation. It has got more impact, isn't it? And more serious, more deleterious. Usually it's deleterious, non-synonymous. Nonsense mutation is the mutation that result in the stop codon. UGA in the DNA sequence is, uh, you know, that is basically a stop codon, right? In the RNA, isn't it? You. So uh, when it comes, this codon comes, the transcription stops, right? So that is why it is basically a stop codon UGA. So that is what you call it as a nonsense mutation. And mutations in gene promoters can change the gene expression, of course. And mutations in splice sites, the so-called spliceosomes, intron exon boundaries, can result in abnormal proteins. Like uh, you know, so uh, in uh, ex, you know, introns are also getting transcribed. So in this kind of mutation, that is the reason for many of the diseases. For example, adermatoglyphia. That means the fingerprint is gone. Because those individuals having this mutation will have no fingerprint. So the fingerprint sensor doesn't work, neither biometric uh, sensors, you know. So yeah, that is another kind of mutation, right? So all different kinds of mutations. So we already discussed how these uh, alleles are being formed. How about genes? So genes, the origin of genes is mostly by a process called paralogy, the paralogous gene or duplication of the genes. So how does this du duplication happen? Usually by unequal crossing over at the prophase one of the meiosis. So the crossing over is usually, uh, you know, usually it is uh, uh, equal, but sometimes it is unequal, like in this schematic diagram. So first one A is normal one, you know, the crossing over is normal here. So as you can see that at this point, the crossing over happens. And uh, uh, you know this. Uh, 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 you know, as you can see, this and this are being interchanged, right? So that is what the the normal crossing over. And now this one is misalignment of the entire uh, sketch of this chromosome. Uh, for example, because of the abnormal pairing between the repetitive sequences, you know, so like T T T T T T or A A A A, you know, so that kind of homo uh, polymer stretch is a problematic during the replication isn't it even for the crossover so if if it aligns like this in the prophase of the meiosis you know so then the crossover happens here then what will happen this particular chromosome will have two copies different copies you know uh, two two uh, different versions that is alleles while the second one has nothing so usually this one is gone but this one is going to have a duplicated gene that can actually evolve. Usually the, uh, the second copy of the gene becomes uh, a pseudo gene, not functional, but the sometimes pseudo genes can occur in new functions. So that is how the genes are being formed. So that lead to something called copy number variations. So number copies, like in, the, in, the, in this example, uh, the one gene becomes two genes, so two copies. So uh, sometimes this number of copies changes. So copy number variation, or CNV. So CNV is uh, associated with several of the cancer, for example, colorectal cancer, you know. So you can look at the copy number of this, if, uh, some of these uh, uh, key genes to uh, even to diagnose certain cancer early on, you know. So it's next way of this origin of genes is by retroposition or retro duplication. What is that? Yeah, so it's basically uh, retro that uh, means a, re a reverse transcriptase enzyme assisted or virus assisted, right? So basically it's processed mRNA. Processed mRNA means introns have already been removed. Only exons are there. So spliceosome worked, you know. So processed mRNA gets reverse transcribed to the DNA. By reverse transcriptase enzyme, usually it is in, uh, uh, you know, retroviruses have it, uh, like uh, HIV. And this DNA gets integrated back to the genome, you know. So after formation of this mRNA, mRNA gets back into the genome. Usually this integration back to the genome is, uh, high, you know, it's, uh, it's completely random. So that is why you can actually guess, is it uh, uh, new genes are formed by the retro transposition? Uh, if it is in different location or gene duplication by paralogy, usually, uh, you know, it is a link. Li there is a factor of linkage here because it is uh, physically it's an adjacent chromosome. Maybe it's in the same chromosome, then it is gene duplication. But otherwise, it is retrotransposon if it's an entirely different chromosome. And de novo synthesis is another option that is in which 
uh, stop codon gets mutated so that the the genes the new genes can form you know so the de novo synthesis is yet another way of origin of genes so the, the three are the major function uh, major ways out of which paralogy is the most prominent way now coming to the chromosome mutation uh, the, the whole chromosome can mutate in two you know so mostly it is inversion so you can see that this is the normal chromosome one two seven six you know one two three four five six seven eight like that but it can actually you know this is not normal it's, a, it's after the product of this loop chromosome you can see that there is a loop formation one two three four then uh, you know five six seven then eight so because of this loop uh, after formation of loop then uh, you know excision happens at two locations so here nick one nick two will form and then this nick one and this gets integrated and this two gets integrated to form a structure like this one two three four then seven six five then eight see there is an inversion happened here right so that is the chromosome mutation that is called chromosome inversion let me take a sip of coffee Yes, so I hope it's clear. So there are actually two double strand, uh, you know, double strand break in the chromosome, and this is uh, quite common in Drosophila. You know, the inversion is very, very common. Even the inversion, you can see that the frequency of the inversion uh, from one location to another, and uh, even the Klein, uh, you can see that. So Klein means change in frequency in response to the geographical gradient. For example, if you go from bottom of the hill to the top of a hill. Uh, you can see different kinds of climb. So sometimes the inversion frequency is low, uh, in some places a little bit high, and in highest of the mountain in, in the flies, the inversion frequency is very high. So the, such kind of, uh, you know, variants are known as climb, you know. So inversion is very, very common in Drosophila. Another kinds of chromosome level mutation is a nuploidy. A nuploidy is extra chromosome or absence of the chromosome. So abnormal number of chromosome in the same genome. You know, so extra chromosome is a trisomy, you know, so in, in the diploid organism, trisomy means three sets of chromosome. For example, trisomy of 21 result in the Down syndrome. You can see that this is karyotype, uh, the whole set of the chromosomes of uh, a, genome, uh, a genome. So you can see that everything else is fine, but we just have one extra copy of the 21 chromosome number 21, you know. So that is uh, that is a problem. So of course we have 23 uh, sets of the chromosome in the human beings. So if one of the chromosome gets extra copy, that is extra chromosome that is called trisomy. Of course, it's a disease. No? Down syndrome is a disease. And if uh, there is only one chromosome in, instead of two, uh, instead of pair, so that is something called monosomy. Uh, a disease like Turner syndrome is resultant of this monosomy. All these are aneuploidy. And the finally comes polyploidy. So polyploidy means a whole genome gets duplicated, you know, entire sets of chromosome. So, uh, for example, tetraploid, that is four times enter set, hexaploid, six, and octoploid is eight. Usually it happens only in, uh, uh, you know, in uh, 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 even, right, four, not five. Uh, the reason is simple, the five cannot survive, you know. So it's very, very common in uh, plants because of selfing self-fertilization right so polyploidy can lead to the speciation as resulting individuals so speciation is uh, usually it forms so tetraploid for example it can mate with diploid no problem but the resultant is a uh, you know triploid three that is odd number right so triploid offsprings do not survive because the uh, the, the number is odd right so uh, it actually uh, three mean becomes 1.5 that becomes deleterious and individuals usually don't even survive to achieve the reproductive maturity. That is the reason why only, uh, you know, even numbers are being uh, formed in polyploidy, not odd numbers of the, the whole genome. And most mutations are neutral. That confers, uh, you know, no evolutionary advantage. So that is exactly the neutral theory of evolution. So most of these uh, mutations are neutral, you know, and some of these deleterious or lethal mutations are quickly removed through purifying selection. Removal of this deleterious mutation is called purifying selection. And only a small fraction are advantageous mutations that are being survived. 
you know so the adaptive mutations are really really small and only that fraction is concerned with the darwin's theory of evolution isn't it natural selection